Hello, everyone. Uh, did you have a good sleep last night? Oh, I think it must have been hard to sleep because of the sounds of the waves. Or is it okay? I got really good sleep last night. I was kind of tired yesterday. But I feel so joyful when I woke up this morning. Today we'll read from the Bible, Luke chapter 10. And most people think that the Bible is really boring. But if we know the Bible and enter into the world of the Bible, and we get to feel love. Yes, there's a love between a man and a woman. And we often feel the love the parents have towards their children. But this about your love, if you, if you get to keep this love in your heart and hold it in your heart, then that love becomes the power to overcome darkness. And it becomes the power to overcome despair. And it becomes the power to overcome sadness. And in my life as well, many times I faced many big and small problems. But from 2001, I began to work with the IYF. And during that time, I was not able to get to know all the youths deeply, but, but oftentimes the heart to truly love the students arose in my heart. And when I saw the students changing and being renewed, it made me so happy. And so I'm running around tirelessly. So if your eyes open towards this world of love, amazingly your heart will fall deep into love. And so this is also true with romantic love, but also with love for your parents. Oh, and to think about the loving relationship between you and God, it makes you so happy. Even though you're a drug addict, and when that person thinks about that love, it's not hard for him to quit drugs. And so, and all the different problems you have, it's not a problem at all. You know, I fly often on the airplanes, and I travel all around the world, and I do many different things. And when I see the faces of the youth, it makes me so happy and so joyous. Today, let me first read from the Bible, Luke chapter 10, verse 30. I will read. Please open to Luke chapter 10, verse 30. And it'll show on the screen. You know, you can see it, right? The writing on the screen. I will read. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a priest by that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. 
which now these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among thieves. And he said that he that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. And the Bible, for the most part, talks about how we were in misery and then how we become bright. And these words are not words that have nothing to do with us. It's talking about how we too were in misery, but how we met Jesus and became free from it. I meet many, many young students, and I see them change. There's this one pastor that I know, and maybe he's here. And he served in prison for 17 years. And so when it comes to crime, he's very, very gifted. 교도소에서 교도관들이 쩔쩔매요. And the prison guards would struggle so hard with him. 교도소에 보일러에 불 깨는 일을 하는데. And he worked in the boiler room in the prison. 장작을 보일러에 넣고 거기다 이제 그 크랑 섞어 챙겨 나무를 보일러 안으로 밀어 넣었어. And so they would put wood into the furnace, and he would have a big metal rod to push the wood into the furnace. 근데 그때 이 상상은 무슨 생각이 안 탔더라. But right then, a strange thought came to him. And he was in the boiler room by himself. The red tip, the, the tip of the metal rod, 10 centimeters, he got it red hot in the fire. And there was a hole in the cement wall. That red hot tip of the rod, he put it into that hole and he pulled it up and down, up and down. And after a little bit, he broke that tip off. He checked that there was nobody around. And then he dug the ground and buried it. And then he just came out casual. And then each time he would have to work in the boiler room, he took out that piece from the ground and began to sharpen it. After about a month, that piece of metal became a very sharp knife. And he felt very strong. He put it in his pocket. And a prison guard was walking by. And so he ran into a prison guard who used to pick on him. And so he put his hand arm around his shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then he made him able to feel it. You don't feel it? Let me tell you. Look. A very sharp knife was at his neck. And then the prison guard completely froze. And he began to speak to him. You know, in this world, I'm always in prison. I'm not having any fun in this world. And you guys always give me such a hard time. So I want to go on to the next world. And it's too boring to go by myself. And so why don't you come with me, he said to him. And the prison guard was trembling in fear. And they opened an uh, empty room. And just the two of them went in that room. And he told the prison guard, get on his knees. And the guy sat behind him and he yelled out, Bring me the warden of the prison. Bring me the minister of justice. Then I'll open this door. And so it's an you know, emergency state in the prison now. And so this guy served in prison for 17 years. And he thought, ah, oh, now they're going to kill him. You know, if, they, if he dies, that's fine, but he can't kill a prison guard, take him with him. And so at the prison, all the workers got together and had a meeting all night long. And then around 3 in the morning, about 30 prison guards 
They got a big pillar of wood and on their shoulder. And they ran and rammed that wood into the wall. And as the wall collapsed, the two men in the cell were underneath the wall. And they got hurt a little bit, but the both of them lived. From then on, nobody would mess with him in prison. And then this man, he thought, and so this man was giving the prison such a difficult hard time so what he did was and they brought a pastor to the prison and they made that pastor that guy's father and so that father would bring him underwear and bring him some money and it was fun but what that father would say is hey in your prison there's this terrible person in your cell and he's a guy who says that he has no sin don't ever talk to him and he didn't know who that was but the father mentioned him so he got to know and he went into his cell and met him hey you say you have no sin man that makes me laugh if you have no sin why are you in prison does that make any sense but what that guy said was oh sir I had a lot of sins but I got all my sins washed clean. And when he heard that, suddenly he felt shocked. Because this man committed many, many sins. And he's hurt others so badly. And he gave people many hardships. And occasionally, when things would settle, sometimes he would feel sorry and guilty to the people that he hurt. Occasionally, he would think, Man, I want to I want to stop sinning. You know, I want to shed my sins. But he doesn't know how to wash away his sins, how to shed his sins, so he just lived on. One time there was a guy trying to kill him with a knife. And with his bare hands, he just grabbed the blade of the knife. And his hand was bleeding because of the blade of the knife. He just grabbed the knife. And the guy who had the knife began to tremble in fear. Let go of this knife before I kill you. And the other guy got so scared. No one could handle this man. But he was always boasting in his life. Hey, you get to live this life just once. And if you die, that's it. Everybody dies anyway. It's okay. And he did so many terrible things. You know, but he saw this guy. And that guy says, I received the forgiveness of sins. And it was so shocking. What, who do you think you are? You say all your sins are washed? Right then, what kind of a heart he began to have inside was. Before hearing that, he thought he was fine. After that, all of a sudden, he began to feel in his heart, I wish I could get my sins washed away too. I'm so sick and tired of sins. I feel so guilty. I feel so ashamed because my parents. But this other guy in prison says that his sins are clean. He suddenly had this urge of wanting to get his sins washed clean. So he asked him, 
어떻게 재산 받는데? So how do you get your sins forgiven? <웃음> he asked him loud. 그가 뭐라고 설명을 하는 거야? And the guy was trying to explain. 생전에 교회를 가봤어. But he's never been to church. 종교를 읽어봤어. He's never read the Bible. 나쁜 짓 하고. All he did was bad things. 싸움 하고. Get into fights. 막 그러만 살았던 사람이라고. And that was just how he lived his life. 성경과 이해가 안 가는 거예요. He couldn't understand what the guy was telling him about the Bible. 자기 마음 안에 and in his heart 나도 이 죄사함 받고 싶다. I too want to receive the freedom of sin. 죄에서 좀 벗어나고 싶다. I want to be freed from sin. 나좀 깨끗해지고 싶다. Oh, I want to become clean. 그런 마음이 마음에서 확 차고. And they were filled with that kind of a heart. 견딜 수 없어. And it was unbearable. He couldn't handle it. So he said, Come on, please tell me in detail. And the guy was explaining, but he couldn't understand. He's never read the Bible, he's never heard anything like this. And it drove him crazy. This guy has received the fruit of his sins. And he lives with so much peace and joy in prison. 난내 마음이 널 죄에 눌리고 고통스럽게 젖고 괴롭고 견딜 수가 없는 거예요. 그래서 이분에게 이야기, 이야기 듣고 싶었어요. So 아무리 이야기를 들어도 no 너무 너무 모르니까 말이 이해가 안 가는 거예요. And he tried so hard to listen. And the guy is explaining and explaining. He couldn't understand a thing. And it drove him crazy. Come on, one more time, please, slowly. Come on, this is so easy. Why don't you understand? You know, he's an expert when it comes to committing sins. But he was nowhere near forgiveness. He feels the guilt, shame, and burden of sin. But because he's never heard about the forgiveness of sin, he couldn't understand. Come on, just explain one more time. I'm sorry. Come on, I'm going explain. You don't get it. It's so, it's so easy and simple. I'm sorry. Please explain again. And for the first time, he's saying sorry and bowing his head. And it drove him crazy. He couldn't understand. Oh, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. He couldn't get it. Inside it drove him crazy. And it's the two of them. This guy committed lots of sins. But his sins all forgiven. He's happy. And he's happy in prison. And he's living joyfully. But this guy, he's inside of sin, committed sins, he's in so much pain. And it was driving him crazy. And the guy is telling him about forgiveness of sins. He couldn't understand. It sounded like a foreign language. What do I do? I want to receive forgiveness also. I want to be born again too. I want to get my sins forgiven. I want to live new. I want to live lightly. I want to have, sins, have my sins washed. It drove him crazy. And he, this guy received the forgiveness of sins. And that guy is explaining it to him. And it's not English. It's not in Chinese. It's in the Korean language. He couldn't get it. He couldn't get it. And so the guy couldn't understand. Oh, come on, brother. You don't even get this. Come on. And before, his pride wouldn't allow it. This time he says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please explain one more time. And no matter how much he explained, he couldn't get it. So the guy began to unbutton his shirt. And on his chest, there was a book that he was carrying. He pulled that book out. And that's the book that I wrote about the forgiveness of sins. My brother promised me that you're going to read this book and return it to me. The promise you're going to give it back to me. This is my only book in prison here. It's more precious to me than life. I 
right, right, right. So that he could tear one into two. So that man began to read that book. <sighs> he read it all afternoon long. And he skipped the meal deep into the night. He read. <laughs> and everybody else is sleeping. <laughs> he was reading the book by himself. <laughs> he was sucked into the book. And then, around 10 at night, <laughs> he got to a topic. No matter how much he read, he couldn't understand. What is this? What does this mean? He couldn't take it. Hey, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, come on, let me sleep. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'll explain tomorrow morning. No, 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 just explain this one thing. Come on, this one time. Oh, come on, what's wrong with you? If it was before, he would just hit him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then he opened his eyes. Oh, oh that, that means this. And he understood. Oh, really? Thanks, I'm sorry. Back to sleep, back to sleep. And he started to understand it seemed that he was going to receive the forgiveness of sins. And then he kept on reading until one or two in the morning. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I'm really, I'm going nuts here. You know, I, I know I shouldn't do this. But can you explain this one more thing? I'm not going to ask you again. Just this one thing, explain. Come on, let's do it tomorrow. You know, not tomorrow. I can't wait that long, please. So what is it? Oh, that, this means that. And he explained, so the guy understood it again. And it became bright day the next day. The amazing thing is, all of his sins were gone. All the sins in my heart are washed clean. All the time he had done so many terrible things, living 17 years in prison. He went through a lot of sufferings and difficulties. But now he received the forgiveness of sins. Man, he changed so much. And he served 17 years in prison. And then it was three months before his release. He wrote a letter to his father. Father, in three months, I'll be released from the prison. Father, all I did was make you worry. I'm a bad son. I will come and see you, father. And he sent the letter. And then he wrote a letter to his friends. Hey, it's been a long time. Now in three months, I'll be coming on for the prison and I'll let me see you guys. And then what he thought was, there were the three most good guys while he was in prison. It was the Christian leader in prison and also the Buddhist leader in prison and the Catholic leader. These three guys, even though they were in prison, they were like angels. And these guys lived 10, 20 years in prison without committing crimes. They lived clean. And when they were leaving, they said, now I'm done. Now my hands are clean. I'm going to live clean and bright now. It seemed that they would never sin again. They lived like angels while they were in prison. But they would go out. And then six months later, they'd be back in prison. And three months later, back in prison. Some, some people are back in prison in one month. Really impatient people are back in prison in one week. And while they're in prison, they can't sin. So they thought that they're fixed from sinning. But once they become free, they fall back into sin. And then he 
thought about it. Before they lived without any thought. But after receiving the forgiveness of sins, he thought, oh, I'm going to end up back in prison too. He called his father and then get together with his friends and then I'm going to have a drink with my friends and commit sin. And he thought he was going to do that. And then he thought about it. Oh, I'm going to spend my rest of my life in prison. Even just 10 years ago, I want to be back out in that bright world. And then I'm going to be have a good time for a week or a month and I'll be back in prison. And so even though it's me, I'm going to end up back in prison. And so now he had an assignment Is there a way for me to not end up back in prison? How can I not commit sins? But no matter how much he thought about it, he knew that surely if he goes out, he'll be back in prison. You know, because that's how it happens to everybody. And so his whole life, he'll be back in prison. It was so pitiful to think of that. So how could I not end up back in prison? I'll be released in three months. You know, what's going to happen if I come back in prison in one month? He's not even released yet. He was so afraid and burdened about coming back to prison. How could I end up not back in prison? How could I not commit sins? And he thought about it a lot. And no matter how much he thought about it, there was no way. But after he received the forgiveness of sin, God bestowed grace unto him. Ah, I can't do this through my own strength. And so if I have a great leader who will guide me, then this can work. As I lived my whole life, you know, he only lived the life of committing sins. And there was not even one person who could guide or lead him. And then he remembered how he read this book on the forgiveness of sins. And on the back, he saw my name and my phone number. Oh, if I go to Pastor Oksu Park, he can help me. And he wrote me a letter. And now, this is the kind of person I am. And for 17 years, I was in prison. In a few months, I'll be released. But I feel if I'm released, I'll be back in prison. Pastor, would you please lead me? And I told him to come. And so 17 years, and then he was released. He wanted to, but he didn't go see his father. He didn't go see his friends. He came to my church. And there was one open room. And I told him to stay in that room. And he stayed at my church for one year. And for one year, he cleaned all the bathrooms, all the garbage in our church. And then what he said was that during that one year at church, he was so happy. Now it's been one month since I've been out of prison. But I'm not back in prison. He was so happy. It's been two months already. But I'm not back in prison. It's been three months. It's been five months. It's been ten months. But I'm not back in prison. I was so happy. And one year passed. And then I said to him, Enter the missionary school. And he entered the missionary school, studied the Bible so well. And he was so happy. If he just goes out into the world, quickly he'll fall into sin, get into fights, and steal, hit people, go back to jail and prison. 
And for the one year, he was so happy. He studied so hard in the missionary school. After missionary school, he became a gospel preacher. And he became a gospel preacher. And the moment he became a gospel preacher, the church arranged and he met a beautiful lady and got married. And it was like a dream. Oh, I'm a pastor. I'm married. I have a son. And he was so happy. He was so happy. And one day, he, and he called all the prisons in Korea. And this is the kind of person I am. You know, I'm going to lecture in prison. And nobody would welcome him. So one prison said, come. And then during lectures, everybody falls asleep. You know, they say, yeah, they're going to fall asleep, but you can speak. You know, but you can go ahead and do your lecture. And he went in. He talked about how he was in prison, how he came out, and how he didn't go back to prison. Everybody listened so well. That day, he lectured five hours. Everybody loved it. And he was so thankful. When people meet Jesus, hello, it's not you meet Jesus' face. When you meet Jesus, inside of the Bible is the heart of Jesus. And when you meet the heart of Jesus, the heart of Jesus and your heart begin to flow with one another. And when the heart of Jesus flows into your heart, the heart of Jesus is the heart that overcomes sin, and the heart of Jesus overcomes lust, and overcomes gambling, and it's the heart that overcomes drugs. And when your heart becomes one with Jesus, then the person changes amazingly. I went to Kenya one year ago. And I went to many prisons in Kenya. He went to many prisons in Kenya and preached the Bible. And they enjoyed his Bible preaching in the Kenyan prisons. So he started theology schools in Kenyan prisons. And recently, those people in Kenya prisons finished one year course of the theology school. And then two, four inmates who received the training, they were ordained pastors. They all passed the exams. And the families were so happy, they were crying. And the news about this spread throughout all over Kenya. The prisons were now changed to churches. And then he would go to the other churches and teach the pastors there. And the inmates in the prisons learned the Bible for one year. They changed amazingly. This is not only happening in Kenya. And all this is spreading through many other countries. And so the crime rate from the prisons have fallen very low. As we do this kind of work, you know, it's not that we commit sins or commit crimes or do drugs on our own. In the Bible, the evil spirit in our hearts puts in the heart to want to sin, the heart to hate, the heart to gamble, the heart to commit adultery, and stirs up instead of the heart to want to commit sin. Many people who gamble, they really try hard not to gamble. They really try hard not to gamble, but I shouldn't gamble, I'm going to get failed, I'm going to be in big trouble. 
But on one side of their heart, they still have the desire to go gambling. And it's because people don't know exactly what's going on. And people who gamble through it, I lose a lot of money, I lose my house. They say, I'm going to stop gambling. If I gamble more, there's going to be more problems. I better stop gambling. They have that kind of a heart. That is their heart. Can you not use the camera? Yeah, I can. Sorry. Can you please turn off the yeah. flash? So everyone, the important thing is, you know, they are trying not to gamble. And I'm trying not to do drugs. And I'm trying to stop playing the games. But inside of the heart, they have the heart of wanting to play the game. And inside of you, there's two hearts. There's one other heart in you. Surely it is your heart to not gamble. I lost all my wealth through gambling. It was difficult. I should not gamble. I should not gamble. That is your heart. But the heart of wanting to gamble arises in you. That is not your heart. In John chapter 13, verse 2, what does it say in the Bible? It says that the devil having to put into the heart of Judas Iscariot the heart to betray Jesus. In other words, people have their heart, people have their body, people have their spirit. However, the evil spirit, he has no body at all. You cannot touch it, you cannot see it. But surely it is a spiritual being. And that evil spirit leads us into sinfulness. And so I've met many inmates who've committed terrible crimes. And all the same, what they say is, Pastor, at that time, I was not in my right mind. I didn't even think of doing it. But a certain thought entered my heart, and it dragged me and made me like this. And I hear so much about those kinds of words. But what does the evil spirit look like? You know, with like horns and fangs and messed up hair, you know, all scary. It doesn't look like that. The spiritual being has no body. You can't see it with your eyes. You can't touch it with your hand. But surely there is that evil spirit that exists. And what does the evil spirit do inside of us? It puts its thoughts into our hearts. The evil spirit will not tell you, oh, go commit murder, steal, commit adultery. But what does the evil spirit do inside of us? Evil heart and the heart of wanting to steal, the lustful heart, and puts the deceitful heart inside of us. Surely I am trying not to gamble. And surely I am trying not to play the game. Surely I am trying not to do drugs. Surely I'm trying not to do the bad things. That's how my heart is. In my heart, I'm not trying to do those things. But what's going on? The heart of wanting to gamble arises in you. And it fights against your heart. I shouldn't gamble. I shouldn't. I've lost too much money to gambling. It's going to destroy me. But of that heart, 
the heart the evil spirit puts in you. It's more wise than us. We say, no, 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 but it continually drags us. And that's how the evil spirit works on people. And I've met a lot of people who converse with the evil spirit. In my church, there is a sister who works for the Tomorrow Magazine. And one day with her friend, she came to see me. And this lady, deep late at night, and so, you know, she got married, she had a pretty baby, and her mother and her older brother was helping her with her business. One day, the fortune teller said to her, it's good for you to send your daughter far away. But it felt as though if she didn't listen to the fortune teller, something bad was going to happen. So even though she lived in Busan, she sent her daughter to her uncle's house in Seoul. Even though she missed her daughter so much, she was unable to meet her daughter, sent her to her uncle. And afterwards, what happened was, one day the fortune teller said to her, you know, send your mother and your older brother out from your company. Oh, I can't do that. How? I can't do that. Hey, do you know why you're living well? If you don't obey me, you're going to be destroyed. And so she had no choice but to send away her mother and her older brother. And then she got divorced from her husband before. Now this lady was living all by herself. She lived in the 38-story high-rise apartment. And then things were difficult. She couldn't fall asleep two in the morning. And somebody called her name. She didn't see anything physical. But she couldn't tell whether she was hearing that voice with her ears or in her mind. And then it sounded so warm. Oh, you worked so hard all this time. You know, you've lived such a difficult life. Now you need to get some rest. I will give you rest. That voice sounded so warm. And she was so thankful to it. It sounded so warm. It said, open the window. She opened her window. It was 2 in the morning. All around it was quiet, just the signals were blinking. She opened the window. And then what the voice said was, jump out. From 38th floor, jump out. Then it's over. You can rest. People live to die anyway. Don't worry about it. You're going to have so much peace. But she couldn't die with her daughter remaining. If I die, what's going to happen to my daughter? And she thought about that. But how did the voice know? The voice said, Don't worry about your daughter. You own two apartments. And your mom likes money. Your mom will keep your apartments and take good care of your daughter. And maybe if she had a drink, she would have jumped out. But right then, one thought came to her. And she was completely shocked. One month ago, she had a close friend of hers. And that friend was supposed to go hiking with her the next day. And the day before, they had plans to where to go hiking. And they had everything ready to go. And then they were talking till late at night that night. All right, tomorrow morning, I'll see you. We'll go hiking. And then they parted ways. But that friend, in the middle of the night in her sleep, she hung herself in the shower and killed herself. 
couldn't believe it. There's no reason for her to die. And it's still a mystery why she died. She couldn't understand. Why did my friend die? She had no misery. She was, so, she was outgoing. We were going to go hiking together the next day. She couldn't understand. But as she, as she heard that voice, Ah, my friend died listening to this voice. I don't know who this is. But that voice made my friend commit suicide. And it was trying to kill me. She was so afraid. And she wanted to jump out. And she was deceived by the evil spirit. And so she began to lock her doors. And she thought, what's wrong with me? There's something wrong with my mind? And she looked for a psychiatrist. And then she got a phone call. Hello? And it was a good friend of hers. Hey, what are you doing? I'm looking for a psychiatrist on the internet. And you know what? There's something I really have to tell you. What is it? Go ahead, tell me. Go ahead, she said. I want you to go and meet my pastor. All right, I'll meet him. How can I go see him? Take the bullet train and come up to Seoul. And so she came up from Busan to Seoul. And they met at the station. They came to see me. And I could see that that the evil spirit had decided to kill this woman and was at work. And that night was a really good chance. If she's with her husband, she can't commit suicide. If she's with her mother or older brother, she can't commit suicide. And she can't commit suicide if her daughter's nearby. The evil spirit was trying to kill this woman, made her get divorced, made her send her daughter away, made her send away her mother and her older brother. Lady, you have to believe Jesus. I'll believe next time. The evil spirit's dragging her, trying to kill her right now. If you can, if this continues, you're going to be in big trouble. And I yelled at her. Right then, she told me what was happening in her heart. And that day, that lady received the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Is the heart of Jesus. When you become one with the heart of Jesus, you receive the forgiveness of sins, and the heart of Jesus enters you. You have peace and grace and joy. On the other hand, people who do not receive the forgiveness of sins and led by the evil spirit, the evil spirit first puts thoughts inside of us and then puts words inside of us. I too met a lot of people who are led by the evil spirit. You know, some women after their husband go to work, all day long they talk with the evil spirit. Some women, they say, oh, I have a boyfriend. And the friend said, wow, it's good for you. And she talks about her boyfriend every day. Hey, let us meet your boyfriend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then come to my house tonight. And that night the friend went over to our house and to see her, the, her friend's boyfriend. And then they're sitting at home talking. Suddenly 10.30 at night that friend all of a sudden begins talking all by herself. And talking all by herself for an hour and a half and stop talking. And then all she thought, all the friends gone. And she said, hey, did you see my boyfriend? And they said, hey, that's strange. What's strange? When your boyfriend came in, the door never opened. Hey, you know, don't nitpick. 
문이 열리고 안 열리고 그게 뭐가 중요, 중요해 Who cares if the door opened or not? 남자친구 왔으면 됐지 My boyfriend came over, that's what's important 우리가 이제 자기 볼때 남자친구 그 눈에 보이는데 And so in her eyes, she sees her boyfriend 그 친구가 볼때 전혀 안 보이는데 But that friend couldn't see her at all, see him at all 그 악령이 좋은 남자친구 이 여자를 멸망으로 끌어가는 일을 하는데 And the evil spirit is working as the boyfriend trying to lead her to destruction 저는 이런 문제에 심리 그 전공가니까요, 전공가니까 And so I am the expert in these kinds of fields 이제 그 여자들 가운데서 so among women, 악령하고 대화하고 conversing with the evil spirit, 매일 기다리고 waiting for the evil spirit every day. 많아요. A lot of people are like that. 일본에도 많고. In Japan they're like that. 혹시 여러분 가운데 그런 친구 만나본 적 있어요? And have you ever met a person who had been like that? Raise your hand. 한 명도 없어요. Nobody. 아예 제 뒤에. Yes, 예. in the back. 또, 또 아무 분. Anybody else? Raise your hand. 예, 아 이쪽 이거 이거 yes. 계시고. Over here as well. 예. Yes. 그 만나봤어 자기 악령 대화한 사람 만나봤어요. You've met a person who's conversed with the evil spirits. 아 예. Yes. 아마 상당히 많아요. There's quite a few. 그 실제로 좀더 이제 진행되면 대화가 되고. And if it gets worse, it, they have conversation. 처음에는 악령이 우리 속에 마음을 넣어. But in the beginning, the evil spirit puts heart inside of us. 그래서 내 생각을 자꾸 그 악령이 마음을 넣어 그 악령 속으로 끌어가는 거. And stirs our hearts to lead in the path of the evil spirit. 그 어느 정도 이제 자기 믿고 하나 가까워지면. And if they trust themselves and follow it more and more. 아주 깊이 이야기하고 계속 마음을 끌어가요. And the evil spirit talks to you more and more and drags your heart that way. 자살하게 지키고 and one day it makes you commit suicide. 정말 자기가 자살하게 만들어. and makes you kill yourself. 그래서 자살한 사람하고 한 번도 대화를 안 해봤지만 I've never spoken with a person who committed suicide. 자살하다 실패한 사람 참 많은 저는 대화를 but I've spoken to a lot of people who failed to commit suicide. 지금 이 지구에 on this earth 악령이 눈에 안 보이지만 we don't see the evil spirit with our eyes. 모든 사람 마음에 일을 해. It is working in the hearts of all people's hearts. 그래서 악령이 우리 마음을 끌고 가는데. And so the evil spirit is leading our hearts. 분명히 나는 게임을 안 하려고 하는데. Surely I am trying not to play games. 하고 싶은 마음이 일어나. But the heart to play games arises in you. 내 마음은 절대 두 가지가 하나인데. Your heart can never have two, only one. 사람들 그걸 모르고. But people don't know it. 내 마음이 두 가지래. They think they have two kinds of hearts. 마약하기 싫은 마음도 있고. I have the heart to not want to do drugs. 마약하고 싶은 마음도 있고. And I have the heart to want to do drugs. 가늠하기 싫은 마음도 있고. I have the heart to not commit adultery. And the heart of wanting to commit adultery. 하기 싫은 마음은 내 마음이. And the heart of not wanting to do it is your heart. 하고 싶은 마음은 악령이 주는 마음. And the heart of wanting to do it is from the evil spirit. 내 마음이면 내 생각 같아야 하는데. If it's your heart, it should be same as your thoughts. 내 어떤 마음과 나하고 다른 마음을 마귀로 악령이 넣는. But the evil spirit puts into your heart different from your own heart. 그 악령이 막 크게 막 넣는 게 아니고. And the evil spirit doesn't have scary things. 눈에 보이지 않는 그 마음을 넣는데. But it's unseen and puts that heart inside of you. 우리 마음에 있는 마음이기 때문에. And it's that kind of heart inside of us. 악령이 그렇게 하는 줄 모르고. People don't know it's the evil spirit doing that to them. 대부분 자기가 하는 줄 알아. For the most part, they think it's themselves doing it. 그래서 여러분 저는 교도소에서 참 많은 범죄자 만나 대화를. And so I've met many inmates in prisons. 그들은 잘못 죽거나 범죄하게 된 이야기를 들어보면. And when I listen to their stories of how they committed their crimes, 자기는 아무리 안 해도 악령이 우리보다 더 지혜롭게. And they tried really hard not to do it, but the evil spirit was more wise than them. 그들 끌려가게 마련이고. It pulled them there. 그들 끌려간 범죄하기도 하고 자살하게 하는. And when it pulled them there, they commit crimes, they commit suicide. 그리고 우리가 서로 많은 you know, among many people, and what are many people like? I better not gamble. I better not play games. And they try not to do it, but but the heart of wanting to play games and the heart of wanting to gamble arises in them. It defeats their hearts. They become gamblers and they fall into the games and they live riotously. They end up committing sins. And that is what happens. That's why, as I do the IYF, 
And when I meet many students who have problems, I see the evil spirit at work. And I explain to them about the evil spirit, and when they break free from it, they begin to live very bright and blessed lives. And they get to live truly the happy life. And the spirit is at work. And so you just think that you're just following your thoughts. Surely there is a thought that is different from your thoughts. And that is none other. These are thoughts put into you by the evil spirit. The evil spirit so that it will destroy you. To make you go to hell. That's how the evil spirit leads you. Now when you get married. When the people who love each other get married. And so if you and your wife love each other so we get married. Then your heart should be one, you should be happy. But you're living happily with your wife. One day the evil spirit puts another heart in you. And your heart becomes different from the wife. You clash. And you keep on clashing. Oh, we loved each other. We weren't like this before. What's wrong? Okay, let's talk today one more time. Honey, let's talk calm. Let's slowly talk. Let's not fight. And then they would talk. And then you feel provoked. And you start yelling. Honey, honey, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. And then they start talking again. And then they say harsh words. Oh, this man, I can't take it. I can't live with this guy. He doesn't understand my heart. And the husband feels that way about the wife too. And the evil spirit leads so that the relationship between husband and wife becomes destroyed. Among people who commit suicide today, when you analyze their hearts when they're committing suicide, 98% is committing suicide being led by the evil spirit. Even divorce. You know, I wasn't trying to be like this with my wife. I tried to speak kind. Honey, honey, calm down. Let's be kind. But then the words become harsh. Hey, I can't talk to you. Hey, be quiet. Shut up. And that's what happens. I can't live with this woman. She wasn't like this before. What's wrong with her now? You know, people would say, my wife used to be a lamb. After having the first baby, turned into a wolf. Some people say that. My wife in the beginning was so kind, so calm. But she turned into a wolf. She became a coyote. Do they say that in your countries too? Yes, yes. And most of this from the evil spirit. So here, as you receive the mind education, when you learn precisely about the evil spirit, if you're not led by the evil spirit, first, you'll lose the chances to do drugs. And no instances to, for you to gamble. No instances for you to get divorced. Currently in Seoul, the divorce rate is 30%. If it's 30%, if 1,000 people get married, it means 300 get divorced. But at our Gangnam church, the divorce rate is 0.1%. A lot of people who used to be divorced come back to our church, they reunite. And because the evil spirit put in thoughts, put uh, opposing thoughts between husband and wife, that's why. You know, I've got our married couples in my church. They say, oh, the evil spirit's telling me to hate you these days. And I'm not going to listen to that. And there was one lady, she was demon possessed. And she's always led by the evil spirit. And one day she was weeping and wailing. I asked her, why are you crying? And she just kept on crying. And it was so noisy, I couldn't handle it. And then a few days later, 
with peace in my life. So that when that lady, the demon left her, she was well. I asked her, why were you crying? It's because somebody keeps on telling her inside, hurry up and die. And you're not saved, right? And you're going to be going to hell. And no, if you're not saved, they're going to go to hell. You say you have to get saved. It says you're better off dead early. Go die. Look, there's a car coming. Jump in front of it right now. Jump, jump, jump in front of it. Hurry up and jump in front of it. Go die. And this woman was thinking, if I listen to this voice, I'm going to die. And she was so scared she was going to die, she cried. 여러분 이런 것은 눈에 안 보인다고 사람이 과학적으로 입증할 수 없는데. And these things are invisible, so cannot be proven scientifically. 과학이 하도 우주에서 입증을 못 하는 거죠. It cannot be proven because science is so behind. 여러분 과학은 정확하게 악령이 있습니다. Precisely, we see so often the evil spirit at work upon us. 그런데 여러분 어떤데 갑자기 자살하고 싶은 마음이 일어나. In a sudden, you want to commit suicide. 그때는 자살하려고 하지 말고. Right then, don't go commit suicide. Evil spirit, you put this thought in me, didn't you? If I die, what is that good to you? I'm going to cut my relationship with you. I'm not listening to you. Go ahead and say that. Or get counseling from a pastor nearby. That's how the evil spirit is working inside of us. So no matter how upright, how diligent, and how good you try to live, you're trying not to do drugs. But you don't know that that being is the evil spirit. People are dragged by it. I'm sorry. Raise your hand if you've ever spoken with the evil spirit. Can you come forward? Can you come forward and tell us about that? Yes. Yes, come forward. And so once uh, I used to have depression, and one time I heard a voice to go commit suicide and the, by the beach. And the voice said, nobody uh, loves you in this world, and you are just trash. It said you need to disappear from the world, and even though you disappear, nobody's gonna even care. 嗯, 然后我就走到了海边. 그래, 저는 이제 바닷가로 들어갔고요. So I walked into the ocean. 呃, 我听到很多那个海浪的声音, 感觉这个海水都是很没有情的. And then I listened to the sounds of the waves, and it sounded like even the waves didn't care about me. And I stepped my foot into the ocean. And 
그때는 제가 18살이었는데 제가 이제 뛰어 들락할 때 뒤에 있는 어떤 청소부가 와서 저를 잡았습니다. At that time I was 16 years old and I was going to jump in, jump into the ocean but the cleaning guy held me back from behind. 저희 지혜님이 있어 전자에다. 그래서 저는 이 악령이 존재하는 것을 알고 있습니다. And so I know that this evil spirit exists. 음, 한 가시형 오셔서 저희 라이더 저리. 이번에 이곳에 올수 있어서 너무 감사하고요. I'm very thankful to be here. 저희 아, 저쪽엔 아, 빈 아우스 쪽에다가 저희 아, 바오다 나이스 상해도 저희 진치. 이렇게 목사님 말씀을 들으면서 제 마음속에 상처를 씻을 수 있어서 감사합니다. And then yeah, I could get the wounds in my heart healed through listening to the pastor's words. <웃음> 어, 지금 자살한 사람 가운데 한 80% 악령에 끌려 자살했어요. 80% of the people who commit suicide are led by the evil spirit to commit suicide. 정확한 건 아니죠. It's not very accurate, but 근데 악령에 대해서 배우면 If you learn about the evil spirit, 자살할 확률 거의 없고 There's almost zero chance of committing suicide. 이혼할 일도 거의 없어. Almost zero chance of divorce. 어떤 아내가 남편만 믿게 볼 때고 막 이야기 부딪힐 때 있는데. Because sometimes the wife feels hatred against her husband and argues with him. 아 여보 지금 우리는 사탄의 음성을 듣고 하는 거야. Oh, honey, right now this is happening because we're listening to the voice of Satan. 난 당신 정말 좋고 사랑하는데. Yeah, I really like you. I really love you. 자꾸 사탄의 말 당신은 싸우라 그런 생각을 넣어줘. But Satan keeps on putting me in the thoughts to go fight with you. 우리 그렇게 되면 이혼해야 가야 돼. If this continues, then we're going to get divorced. 이혼하면 우리 아이들 얼마나 불행해지는데. If we get divorced, our kids are going to be so miserable. 사탄을 불러가자. And get behind these Satan. 그 아이들에게 기도하자. And let's pray to God. 목사님 찾아가 이야기하자. And let's go talk to pastor about this. Do you understand? 그래서 이혼을 하게 하고. And that is how it makes you get divorced. 아이들이 범죄 속에 빠지게 하고. And it makes kids fall into crime. 세상을 어둡게 하고. Makes the world dark. 더 많은 사람을 지옥에 데리고 가려. And it's trying to send more people to hell. 사단 모든 사람 속에 악령이 일하는 거야. The evil spirit of Satan works in all people. Because you can't see with your eyes. People are deceived thinking it's my own thought. But precisely put. Your thoughts don't want to play the game. Your thoughts don't want to do drugs. You want to be good but. But it tells you go jump in the water. Nobody cares about you. 내가 보니까 너무 아름다운 얼굴을 가진 아가씨인데. In my eyes, she's a young lady with a beautiful face. 예, 얼마나 많은 사람 사랑하는데. And so many people love her. 네가 어떻게 알아? 우리 엄마 날 사랑해. How do you? You're supposed to. How do you know my mom loves me? 사탄은 물러가라. Get behind these Satan. 네 말을 안 들을 거야. I'm not gonna listen to you. 아, 목사님 이야기야. 네가 바로 그 사탄이고. Ah, you're the Satan that Pastor was talking about. 그래서 사탄 속지 마세요. So don't be deceived by Satan, okay? 예, 오늘 여기까지 이야기하고. And that'll be it for today. 계속해서 여러분 속에 불행이 오는 모든 걸 막을 수 있는 방법이. I'm going to tell you the methods to block all the miseries that come to you. The people who come to our church, they barely get divorced. Only very rarely, maybe one or two. Only 0.1%. So you, the two evil spirits trying to destroy your happiness. They make car accidents and makes these miserable things. It is done through the evil spirit. Those of you who converse with the evil spirit, say get behind the Satan and don't talk to him. And go talk to your pastor. And, and he, will, he will lead you well to live the blessed life. I will finish here for now. I'll continue in the next session. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you. The evil spirit is leading many people to misery. And a lot of people don't know and they are led by the evil spirit to go to destruction. Our IYF members here, please protect them from the evil spirit. And let us speak a whole and let unspeakable grace and the blessings of God be upon all of us. We thank you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone.